Today, it's time to talk about robbery, a robbery of a national hero, somebody that I became significantly emotionally invested in because I thought he was one of the best examples of like the modern game. And I also play a lot of football manager. And this dude was definitely a football manager hero for a long time. Uh, there's also an important life update. I have not run. I haven't run in the last five days. Uh, you guys haven't bullied me to run enough. I have a half marathon next week. But to be fair, my foot hurt. So my foot is recovering. I'm on the injured list as long, uh, you know, alongside the rest of Chelsea and everything. But yeah, you know, I, I appreciated the effort, the spurning. I, you know, I ran 10 miles and then my foot hurt. So here we are. But Ben Brierton Diaz, or what, as he was formerly known, the artist formerly known as Ben Brierton, is the person we're talking about today, and particularly his run-in, essentially, with the new coach at Chile. Now, if you don't know the story of Ben Brierton Diaz, this is some of the best lore you're ever going to hear. This is a very, very English dude named Ben Brierton. Uh, he was born to an English father and, as so happens, a Chilean mother, but he was born and raised in England. He was developed in England as a, a footballer. And at the time of the 2021 Copa America, Ben Brierton was just... He was, he was hanging out. He was playing in the championship. He was a good championship player at Blackburn, I believe, and was just making, making headway while the Chilean national team, ever since winning Copa America in 2016, has lost its generation of Arturo Vidal and Alexi Sanchez, at least them at their peak, and has been struggling a little bit more than they did in the previous 10, 15 years. So they were looking for a spark. And that's when a researcher happened to be trawling through Football Manager, which is very good at figuring out this sort of stuff, and notice that Ben Brierton Diaz, or Ben Brierton as he was at the time, had Chilean ancestry, that he was somehow eligible for Chile, this very, you know, proper British lad looking dude who was just hanging out in the championship was actually a potential Chilean international. An online campaign started to get Ben Brierton called up to the Chilean national team. Nobody had any idea if it was actually ever going to happen. And then at the 2021 Copa America, he was called up and he immediately became this kind of cross-cultural sensation, the same way that Michael Jordan did in China, where it was like, so, you know, everybody loved the sport, and then all of a sudden there was this new guy from this new place who just happened to also belong to them. I don't know if the Michael Jordan metaphor made any sense at all, but maybe like a Jeremy Lin, for example. Lin's sanity and the way that that just kind of blew up across the world. He was the thing to talk about in Chile. And he wasn't bad either, right? He was showing up for Chile, and even though he was basically an English dude playing for the Chilean national team in terms of the culture, like he didn't speak Spanish or anything, he was scoring goals. He scored a massively important goal in their World Cup qualifying campaign. They did end up falling just short, but that wasn't because of his lack of ability or goal scoring. Like he's ended up with over the last, you know, two plus years, 27 caps for the Chilean national team. But that has run into a problem because apparently not all people love super awesome stories like this because I love super awesome stories like that. And I would call this guy up every single freaking time if I could. But uh, yeah, the issue, the issue, the new manager of Chile, Ricardo Gareca, has left Ben Brierton Diaz out of the latest Chilean squad for the March set of matches, the, the international window that we have that's coming up. And the reason that he gave for leaving out the 24 year old striker who has 27 caps and seven goals for Chile is that uh, I would like him to learn Spanish. I think it's important. That was it. He has been Brierton Diaz. And he changed his name after he got called up to the Chilean national team, added his mother's name, which is a pretty common Latin American thing uh, to do in the naming custom. And so he that, that's where Ben Brierton Diaz came from. He didn't just like make up a random name and throw it at the end. He was not called up because he still does not know how to speak Spanish. This is a particularly important call up as well. These are tune up matches for a Copa America that is happening this summer. So there's a major international tournament that Chile will be playing in. You can bet your bottom dollar Ben Burt and Diaz want to be playing in. And they, the coaches just said that he wants to, uh, let me see if I get this, look at other options because Ben Burt and Diaz doesn't know how to speak English. Now, Chile does not have a lot of striker options that play in the Premier League right now because Burton Diaz isn't even a championship player anymore. He's at Villarreal. They've loaned him out to Sheffield United. He is a Premier League player who does actually play, right? I mean, obviously, he's not on, like, Manchester City or anything, but he is, at least if you're looking at, like, level of league he's playing in, 
wage size, whatever, the best striking option that Chile has. And he's been embraced by the Chilean populace as well. This isn't some sort of situation where the Chilean populace was like, ah, huh. Oh, what is that, brother? Like that meme, you know, oh, brother, hey, oh, what is that? Like they they, they, they they, thought it was awesome. The same way that I thought it was awesome, right? Where they were, oh, this guy, you know, he's of Chilean heritage and he's coming back home and he's coming back to play for us and let's welcome him. Like, and, and it was a mutual love affair. But Spanish languages are hard to learn. Depending on who you are, they can be harder to learn, right? I grew up in Florida. I took Spanish class for 10 years. I can understand some words, but God save the king or queen or whatever's going on if I have to actually say a sentence, right? I can't. I can't do it. Puerto ir el baño. Where is the bathroom? That's all you're going to get out of me. Vamos a la playa. We're, oh, let's go to the beach. Like I, th that, the very, very limited Spanish distribution coming out of this mouth after 10 years of Spanish class. Now, was I the best student in Spanish class? No. No, I wasn't. That's thank you for bringing that up. I wasn't really paying attention. But like, seriously, if this matters this much, can the Chilean FA pay for a private tutor? Can they get it? Like, can I get can they get my man some Rosetta Stone? I know Ben Brereton has said that he was trying to learn Spanish. It's just pretty hard to learn, especially when he's still playing in England. He transferred to Spain and then he was loaned back to England. But uh, the coach Gareca did elaborate. He said he was called up for Copa America two years ago. He has had enough time to learn how to speak Spanish. Uh, it is something that I personally told him that I would like him to speak Spanish. I consider it essential for communication, communication with his teammates, with me, with the coaching staff, with the people, and with the press. Now, language is something that is not nearly talked about enough when it comes to club football, at least in the modern media era, right? Language can be a really significant barrier that can prevent communication on the field. But all of these clubs that employ players from all over the world are eventually able to find a lingua franca. And there is a lingua franca in much of the southern United States and a lot of Latin America that I've had people that work for Spanish language television at the MLS describe to me as Spanglish. They'll do the broadcast and still English words will slip in. And so there is an ability to communicate that's obviously not too inhibited because he has 27 caps and seven goals. I've watched him play for Chile. He plays well. The other people like playing with him because he, he plays in the Premier League. Sheffield United has a diverse team and they are able to communicate and, and they, are, they are able to play, right? Being able to speak fluent Spanish is clearly not the most important thing I get what the manager is trying to do here. You're trying to establish a uniformity in a national team. But look, this is the modern world, dude. Uniformity in national teams just, it, it, they don't, it doesn't exist the way that it used to, right? We got Morocco's national team making the semifinal of a World Cup, and 14 of those dudes were not born in Morocco. They speak French, they speak Spanish, they speak Dutch, and that's okay. It's awesome. I love that you were able to play for countries of your parents or grandparents' heritage. I think it's really neat. I think it allows diasporas to connect, and I think it allows you know countries like Morocco to be able to compete in an incredibly high level. But the, this, I just think this is antiquated thinking. I, I, I'm sure if I was sitting in a room with Gareca and I was failing to speak Spanish to him, I would be attempting to make this point, and we would just agree to disagree. Right, because I, I am of the opinion that this is just a very antiquated approach to team building. Obviously, the U.S. national team has guys like Serginho Dest that were raised in the Netherlands, right? We used to have guys like John Brooks or Fabian Johnson that were raised in Germany. They played for United, for, you know, they played for the United States. We saw Anthony Robinson, I believe, was raised in England. Dude's got an English accent, which might as well be another language when you're trying to speak to somebody from like Alabama or something, right? But this is a modern, this is a modern world, right? And, th and this sort of thinking. It kind of goes by the wayside, and especially high-level professionals, right? If you're at the local level, sure, being able to communicate like that's important. But for guys that are playing in the Premier League, like Ben Brereton or other members of the Chilean national team, right? It is not as much of a barrier as it used to be to not being able to communicate in depth in the same language, right? The, the head coach of the Saudi Arabian national team that beat Argentina at the World Cup, one of the greatest upsets in World Cup history, he didn't speak Arabic. He had a freaking translator in the dressing room. If it really matters that much, I'm sure there's somebody on the Chilean team or somebody on the Chilean staff that could be responsible for translating Ben Burton Diaz. But you could also just decide, like, I, my first idea was the best one. The FA should just hire him a tutor, right? Because if you really want to assimilate him, then it, honestly, it's a great idea if you're Ben, too. 
because he'll just start doing like Coca-Cola commercials in Chile. He's going to start making buckets of money. But this is a weird move. It struck me as a weird move. It was it was all over Twitter the other day. Uh, and the way it was translated initially from uh, Sudan Analytics, like a Spanish uh, football data site, was, um, yeah, he's been summoned for two years. He's had enough time to speak Spanish. If there is really an interest in being able to be in the national team, it caught my attention. That he does not speak the language. The way it was translated here really bothered me. Like, you're suggesting that he doesn't care. Like I, I, I am friend with somebody, friends, personal friends with somebody that's actually a dual national, right? Julian Gressel and I have started a podcast together. He was born in Germany and plays for the United States. I asked him about being a dual national, and you form a like it, you know you form a love for that country. Obviously, Gressel's situation and Breerton's situation are different because in Breerton's situation it was family, and Gressel it was he moved to the United States as a teenager, uh, but. The, the 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 love that you form for that country, you playing for the national team, learning the national anthem, like you learning the anthem, meeting the people. It is it is still it, is it different? Yes, but it, look, it's still real. It's still there. And, and I've watched with my own eyes Ben Breerton Diaz play for Chile, and it is unfair to suggest that like because the way this is translated it suggests that he you know he's not really interested or doesn't really care about playing for the, there's a lot of passion there the, the people of chile gave him a ton of love and he has given it back and i i hate that the world is is potentially going to be robbed of one of my favorite stories within it uh, i re i really do yeah he even acknowledges it's not an impediment but i would like it well you, you can't always get what you want you get what you need and what you need is a striker. Thank you to the old prophet, the Rolling Stones. Mick Jagger, I believe, had us covered on that one.